will be attracted and they will apply that okay i am the qualified person and i think i would be eligible to work there as a higher salary okay if you understand that then please answer this concept checker so just let me remind you that but we have learned up till now we have learned that what are the reasons for equilibrium wages we talked about compensating differential we talked about the human capital we talked about ability you know chance effort we talked about signaling we talked about the superstar phenomena and then we talked about that is there any justification to pay above equilibrium salary and that are not in the category of discrimination people are getting higher salary above equilibrium salary and do we have a reason yes there are three reasons number 1 government mandate that one through minimum wage law second the worker demand that through union third the employer pay himself hard salary to attract the best qualified person right so let's talk about this concept chicken let me read that when the supply of workers is plentiful one would predict that the market wages would be guys very interesting question now answer this question Nam, can you answer that? B. Okay. Any other? Did you do? Isaac. Rodrigo. Um. What is the answer? I say C. I was C. thinking B or C. Mm. I we heard the word B, C. Any other answer? Sunho. <coughs> I also B. B. Let's talk about what the answer is. Really. Not B. Why? Let's talk about the answer. So, when the supply of the worker is plentiful, what does it mean? It means there are many workers available to do the job, right? Determine the outside domain of the economic theory. No, we can explain that one. Determine solely by the factor that affect the demand. No, because these are factor of production. the labor demand is a factor of production and its demand is derived demand which means demand depend on the price of the final good that's it it doesn't mean that it affect the supply of the good no supply of the factor of production no so b can never be the answer determine solely by the factor that affect supply not the demand remember that one supply factors should see the supply demand factor should see the demand right it doesn't mean that okay this factor this factor basically affecting the demand and you say that the demand factor is affecting the supply as well no these are two different stuff the factors that affect the labor demand and factors that affect the labor supply these are two different stuff okay guys so when the workers are plentiful their wages would be low we just talked about in compensation sorry compensating differentials good jobs bad jobs when good jobs are there there are more workers who want to work so supply increase supply increase means wages decrease so same concept can apply here right when supply increase demand is high in no way right guys jacob understand yeah nam understand yes okay now i hope you can this time we are able to answer this correctly so i'm going to be reading that one as more companies rely on computer databases and less on filing cabinets these two are different one so demand for computer programs will rise 
wages paid to filing clerks will rise wages paid to computer programmers will rise what is the answer here b uh, no uh, one and three that's c miria marilyn you tell me because i am not hearing your voices miria marilyn Okay, Rodrigo. Paulo. Okay, Isaac. It's C. E. C. C. Yes. Soho. C. Okay, well done. Because when companies are using more databases, so demand for those workers who are programmers, it rises. When demand rises, their salary will rise. Well done, guys. Now answer this question. Which of the following theories would suggest that attaining school does not improve productivity, but the high ability people are more likely to stay in schools? Fike, signal and theory, C. Well done, guys. Well done. Answer this question. The most popular movie stars have high income for a number of reasons. One reason is David. Well done. Good. And now, how does the theory of efficiency wages explain above equilibrium wage? Nam. Did Jody? B. Did Jody? Wait, sir. B. David, Subhan, uh, I believe it's B. It's C or B? B, B for Boris. Okay, let's talk about this. Answer is, well done. Any question regarding this concept? Why not A, C, D? Do you want me to explain that one? Anyone? Or, self, or it, it is self-evident? Uh, please explain a little bit. Okay. How does the theory of efficiency wage, what is efficiency wage? That employer or boss is paying you higher salary. Right? Why you want to pay higher salaries? Number one, reduce employee turnover. What is employee turnover? Reduce employee leaving the job so that employee retain, you know, employee retain in the business. Number two, to attract qualified person.
Number three. Improve productivity. Right? So let's talk about the number A. Employers are forced to pay higher wages in the efficient market. No, if employers are forced to pay, that we call this minimum wage law. It means government is giving, is, is mandating everyone to pay higher salary. So that's why employers are forced. So we don't call it efficiency. Wages, we call this government minimum wage law. B, employers give their workers a higher wages in the hope that it will lead to increased productivity. Yes, the third point correlate to our point B, which means if the employer is giving you higher salary, the employee, it thinks that if the employer is giving or the boss is giving me higher salary, it because I have to maintain high productivity as well, because if I don't maintain that, I cannot find this good job, this good salary job in my competitors. They will give me lower salary because this worker, this, this, this boss is giving me higher salary. Number C, workers get higher wages when they prove they are increasing their productivity. No, workers are, they don't need to prove. If they need to prove that, they need to prove through union, through strike or through some extraordinary stuff that, okay, for example, Morningstar, so that employee who gives you, uh, you, know, you know, higher productivity will be given the higher salary. No, in wages efficiency theory, everybody is given higher salary, not just a one worker. Everybody is given higher salary, right? And the higher salary doesn't correlate with the, you know, if I, uh, does not correlate with the proof or any condition it's implied b workers demand higher salary if workers demand higher salary it is above equilibrium wage through union right so only b is the answer here right guys so let's have a break for 10 minutes then we start again okay guys Okay, guys, welcome back after a short break. Okay, now let's talk about the economics of discrimination. So we, you know, give the, you know, reasons for giving higher salary, logically, first of all, giving higher salary, the reasons we talked about that, the equilibrium wages salary in which, in which we talk about the compensating differential, we talked about human capital, we talked about the ability, effort and chance, we talked about the signaling and superstar and then we talked about the above equilibrium salary which is the government minimum wage law, second the worker demands through union. Third, employer pay higher salary. When employer pay higher salary, willingly we call that efficiency wages, right? And now if any point that doesn't come with these, uh, with the determinants of